Welcome. I'm Mike, a Googler, a statistician, and I'm passionate about learning and sharing. Today, I'm a friend, and I welcome you in to my office. Here we are. I want to start this series with uh, a little story. It involves these. You probably recognize these. These are jigsaw puzzle pieces. Uh, jigsaw puzzles are a big part of my family. These two pieces go to this gigantic puzzle that we're working on right now. It has more than 2,000 pieces. And I bring this up for a reason. I find that there's a lot of things that we do in common when different people build jigsaw puzzles. Maybe we aim for the corner pieces. Maybe we fill in the edges because the pieces are a little easier to identify. They have a flat side, depending on the cut of the puzzle. And it's a little easier to frame and see the size of what you're about to work on. But when you go to the middle, my preferred method is looking for objects that have like clear lines. And then I can pick those pieces. Uh, my wife, she likes to pick ones where like sections with a, a color that's easy to identify amongst all the pieces. Uh, I find that when I work with my mom, she takes the approach of kind of inside out. She looks for features and she builds upon those and then connects them to adjacent features. But what's most interesting about watching family members and others build puzzles is I see techniques that aren't my own. And then when I get a new puzzle, I might consider trying a different technique that might help me or make me more efficient at that particular puzzle. Why are we talking about puzzles? You clicked on a link that's related to machine learning and Google Cloud with Vertex AI. Well, here's why. Um, I believe workflows are the most important part of how we do our work. And in machine learning, workflows are almost as unique as a fingerprint. My favorite thing to do when I go to conferences or meet new people who are in the same field is ask them, uh, how do you do your work? And why do you do it that way? I remember being very, very young as a statistician and going to uh, the joint statistical meeting, the largest gathering of statisticians in the world. And whenever I'd meet someone, the first thing I'd say is, what software do you use? How do you use it? Why do you use it that way? And I would hopefully get them to show me on their computer at the time like, how they did their job. And that made me an infinitely better statistician very, very quickly because the workflows are like the mirrors of what they've learned throughout their career to make themselves efficient. And I can immediately assimilate and decide, do I want that? Do I want to take parts of that? Do I want to consider that when a new project comes up where that might fit better than my typical way? And that is what this series of videos is going to be about. It's going to be about sharing workflows that I have seen with customers, with friends, my own curiosity, and I'm going to put them together in end-to-end -end pieces that show like a, a machine learning project and, and share it with you. I'm going to try to make them independent so that you can skip around or only visit the ones that seem to match what you're interested in. Uh, but I encourage you to try visiting all of these and see maybe it offers something that you can incorporate in one of your future projects. So let's take a look at a few things here. Uh, this is all going to be based on a GitHub repository. I put it in the lower screen here. Um, let's actually make that bigger so we can all see it. All right. In this series, it's a GitHub repo made up of Jupyter Notebooks, a common way that we work in machine learning. Uh, you can visit these notebooks directly in this repository. It's linked in the description of the video if you ended up at the video first. Uh, maybe you ended up at the repository and you clicked the video here, and that's the one you're watching. Within here, I'm going to tell you how to set up a Google Cloud environment. That's the next video. I'm going to bring in a data source and make it available for all the different training methods that we're going to use. Uh, and I'll talk about why I picked that one and how others might work. That'll be the next video after that one. Uh, and then we will start going through uh, using automated procedures like AutoML to train a model and deploy a model. We'll use custom training. Uh, we'll even use BigQuery's built-in machine learning for part of this. We'll use TensorFlow. Uh, as you go through these, I've put up some visuals that I'm going to use in the videos to help explain what I'm doing. Uh, one of my favorites is this one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and let's take a look. Let's see. Uh, 
each of these columns is one of these workflows. Uh, video zero, that's setting up the environment. One is the data source, and then this starts with two. Uh, there are two, uh, three videos in, that are labeled two, A, B, and C. The first is gonna use no clicking, no coding. It's, it, or all clicking, no coding. We're gonna go to a console and we're gonna build a model and deploy a model and get predictions uh, all directly through the web browser. In the second one, we're going to replicate the same thing, but we're gonna actually write code from Python to orchestrate all the same things that we clicked with in the first one. And the third, we're gonna bottle up that code into a higher level abstraction called orchestration. Uh, and we're gonna kind of like build a treadmill or a people mover at the airport to just automatically move through a lot of the process steps. Uh, then videos three, those have two, A and B. We're gonna look at completely working inside BigQuery. And then in the second of those videos, we're gonna extract the model from BigQuery and bring it to Vertex and deploy it. Then with four and five and on, we're gonna take custom modeling. We're gonna take TensorFlow. We're gonna take Scikit-Learn. We're gonna take a number of other tools, and we're going to train models and deploy models, but we're gonna use the core components of Vertex AI and Google Cloud Platform to show that it enables whatever fingerprint of a workflow you want. Uh, before we get going further, there's probably some common questions that people ask at this point. So let's do some Q&A. Uh, how about this question first? Hi, Mike. What is not covered in these workflows? What's not covered is going to be uh, very low level details. I love details. Uh, frequent feedback I get is maybe back off of the detail. And you're probably gonna give me that feedback as well. Uh, what I want to do is take us to the point where all the process steps connect and focus on the details of connecting those to create workflows but once you're inside of a process step like machine learning, uh, we might not go into all the different methods and all the different architectures and all the details of how to perfect an architecture for a particular data type. Uh, we'll back off of that, maybe save that for a different video series so that we can focus in our workflows here. Do I have to watch all the videos? Does order matter? Uh, I would encourage you to watch them all because that's how we assimilate new ideas. You might be bored in a few. Maybe it's like not interesting to your particular field or how you work, but it's still exposure to something that matters to someone somewhere. That's why I put it here. Uh, it just maybe exposes you to a new tool that you'll use. But if you don't, if you go to any additional video in the series, the first thing I'll start with is prerequisites, which previous ones are previous notebooks with videos. Uh, you might need to get to that point and run it. Uh, but I've always made the path to each one as short as possible. How do I learn machine learning? This is my favorite question. Uh, unfortunately, it's not what this video series is about, but I have an answer for you. At least my answer, uh, this is the best part about living right now, is if you asked this question 20 years ago, both the field wasn't quite as mature, but the availability of great content like YouTube and Coursera and Pluralsight and a million other sources, they, they just weren't out there. And now they're everywhere. So I'm gonna give you my favorites. Uh, let's jump over to the screen. And let's scroll down in the repository to a section I added in to the README uh, called exactly this, Learning Machine Learning. Okay. So it's made up of three sources, uh, again, opinionated, uh, but these are my favorites and I've shared them with people who've given me feedback who are like, Mike, th this really, really helped. Now you're gonna, you may be coming from, I've had linear algebra and calculus and I get all this stuff, I know how it works. Still peruse these, because if you're like me, you, you love things that confirm your knowledge and these will do that. And they will also give you great ways of showing how to explain it to others because these are master teachers in here, way better than me. Um, the first is a, a course from Google called the Machine Learning Crash Course. This is great for terminology and explaining how to identify an ML problem, how to frame that problem, it exposes at a high level to a lot of different methods for supervised and unsupervised learning. Uh, it references TensorFlow APIs, uh, so it gives you the ability to quickly go hands-on with some maybe example data. 
Um, it doesn't go into a lot of details about the mechanics of what's happening underneath. Uh, and that's why we go to number two on this list. And that's uh, my, my favorite course. I think somebody told me this is how Coursera started was this course. I hope that's true. But this is uh, Andrew Ng. Uh, it's offered by Stanford on Coursera, and it's just called Machine Learning. And it takes you through a few weeks of taking a couple of algorithms and hand coding, like building them. Uh, you will understand how these work after doing this. Yeah, you might complain about the software choice, uh, Octave. You, you might not like that part, but it's perfect. Just do it exactly the way they explain it and use it just as a chance to just absorb information about how things work. Now, the third thing I've put on here is a list of uh, three YouTube playlists from a YouTuber, Grant Sanderson, with a channel called Three Blue, One Brown. Uh, this Grant is a master explainer of very advanced information. These playlists are my favorite. I rewatch them occasionally. Uh, the first is a neural net playlist. It has four videos. It'll take you through what a neural net is, a simple one. It will create it. He does everything very visually, has his own package to do those. Um, he even gets into the fourth video, the calculus of backpropagation. Uh, that is the moment where the light bulb comes on for most people, like when they understand how the neural net actually learns, the, the gradient descent, the minimizing of a loss function. How does that mathematically work? It's beautiful. Uh, now, as he gets into that video, uh, you might be begging for a refresher if you're not up to speed, uh, relevant, uh, currently relevant on linear algebra and calculus. He's also got two great playlists for those, and I put those in here. Now, the order of these, I recommend getting the high level from the Google crash course, machine learning crash course, uh, going and watching the video series with Grant, then going and getting the fundamentals from the machine learning course Stanford via Coursera, and then re-watching those videos from Grant, the light bulb just comes on. Like, I smile when I watch these. I wish I was as brilliant as these people at just teaching and explaining information. Uh, I think you'll like it. Uh, and if you have a better answer, give that to me in the comments or an email, because I love this stuff. I love learning, but I also like watching how other people teach so I can get better at it. All right, let's jump back to Q&A. I think we have one more question. What if I want more detail or I have questions? Uh, this is great. This brings us kind of to the, the wrap up here. Uh, you're going to have a feeling after you watch this video. If you like it, hit the like button. If you dislike it, yeah, hit the dislike button. Uh, try to hit the like button. Um, that's like giving me a cookie. It gives me encouragement to keep making these videos and adding more notebooks to this repository. Um, additional thing, if you want more content like this, hit the subscribe button. That lets me know, hey, people are waiting on this kind of stuff. Like, make some more. Um, and I'll even reference others if I see subscribers hitting this channel. Uh, if you want to be alerted when I launch a new video, uh, hit the bell also. Now, the next, every YouTuber says those things. Uh, I'm not a YouTuber. Uh, did this help you? Uh, that's like giving a cookie not just to me, but to others who are watching the video. Leave a comment. Say, hey, this video helped me this way. A little word of affirmation. It gives encouragement to others who are watching. Um, but the third thing, maybe the most important part, is you have feedback hey, here's an additional workflow that I like. I would love for you to include something like that. Uh, I have an improvement. Like something you've done could be better. Uh, I have a correction. Something you did wasn't quite right or you misspoke. Okay, give me that as well. But here's a great thing. Since we're using a GitHub repository, go over there, click the issues button at the top, start a new issue. We'll have a conversation. Maybe we'll collaborate and create. Uh, but that way, the repository can be updated way faster than I can remake one of these videos. And that will make the information relevant to everyone almost immediately. Um, and with that, I just want to say thank you for hanging in here for this intro video. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your feedback that's going to be coming. Uh, let's work together to make the practice of AI and ML more collaborative, more accurate, uh, more approachable uh, to a wider and more well-connected audience. Have a great day.